Hey everybody, Zian over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of Shovel Knight Dig on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by Mitch Vogel for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. Shovel Knight has been branching out more and more into other genres as the developer and publisher Yacht Club Games charts a course for where its aptly named hero will hop to next. In 2021, we got the wonderful Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, which uniquely blended falling block puzzle mechanics with roguelite game design. Now we're getting another roguelite with Shovel Knight Dig, only this time the gameplay is much more in line with the action platforming of the original game. And as you can probably expect with the Yacht Club pedigree, it's an absolute blast to play. Nitrome, who are the developers behind the game Bomb Chicken, delivers a tough, rewarding, and enjoyable new experience that series diehard fans will want to dig into immediately. Shovel Knight Dig takes place before the original game with a brand new villain known as Drill Knight. They've put together a team of knights called the Hexcavators to help in uncovering a treasure room buried somewhere deep within the earth. This causes a massive amount of panic and problems for the people on the surface, partially due to the fact that they've caused a scene by digging a massive hole. So Shovel Knight and Shield Knight dive in to try to get to the bottom of it all. The story this time around isn't as much of a focus as this is a highly replayable roguelite platformer first and foremost. Even so, what's here creates a certain amount of intrigue as you can't help but wonder what awaits you at the bottom of the hole. And fans of the series will appreciate the many nods to other titles that take place later on in the Shovel Knight timeline. It's nice to see Shovel and Shield's relationship played out in more than just the brief flashbacks we get elsewhere in the series, and interacting with earlier incarnations of Mole Knight and Tinker Knight before they joined the Order of No Quarters provides some cool insights into the characters. The lore isn't super heavy in this game, so first timers for the franchise won't feel like they're missing out on much, but those who have played previous releases will appreciate seeing how this all fits in. Now the gameplay could be best described as what the original Shovel Knight game would look like if it were made with the design philosophy of something like Downwell. You play as the iconic Blue Knight and start each run by jumping into the hole, with the goal simply being to get to the bottom as fast as possible while collecting as much as you can on the way down. Each run is divided up into biomes composed of three levels, with a final fourth level consisting of a boss fight with that area's resident knight. Each time you fall in battle, you're brought back to the surface and have to try it all over again. You do retain some of your collected gems with each run, but otherwise, you'll lose all of your upgrades and inventory items that weren't already permanent. Suffice to say, the difficulty is brutal, but not necessarily unfair. You don't really have that much health to begin each run, and though this can later be expanded via shops and upgrades, healing items are typically pretty sparse. Most failures aren't caused because you simply hit a brick wall that you couldn't get past, but rather they're deaths by a thousand cuts, as every miscalculated jump and rough enemy encounter adds up to eventually take a final toll. You'd think the solution would be to simply take things slow and play it safe, but there is constantly a huge invincible buzzsaw drill bearing down on you from above. Most of the time you don't even know it's there, but if you're taking too much time fooling around and trying to snap up every gem and collectible that you see, it'll catch up to you fast and kill you instantly. With this, there's a delicious kind of tension to every minute of your run. Shovel Knight Dig certainly adheres to the rich get richer philosophy, where effective play is rewarded with rewards that make the game even easier, while playing poorly will make things even harder for you the longer you go on. It's in your best interest to collect as many gems as possible on your way down, as this will directly give you more freedom to buy relics, upgrades, and healing items if you happen to come across the shop. If you don't learn how to effectively prioritize which groups of gems to grab and which ones to pass on, you'll find the saw eventually catching you. Finding that risk reward line is a big part of the fun of Shovel Knight Dig, and you'll find yourself slowly building a knowledge base as time goes on, and you learn how to best handle the myriad situations and obstacles that may arise. 
Though every level is randomly generated, we appreciated how the various stage gimmicks and enemy types here came together to give a handcrafted feel to these new biomes. Whether you're bouncing between mushrooms, dodging bubbles and swimming fish, or disarming bombs before they go off, there's hardly ever a dull moment in Dig as you frantically swipe and jump your way to safety. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay feels extremely similar to the original Shovel Knight. You have the exact same moveset and even the physics feel quite similar, but given this, it feels like you're always capable of overcoming the barriers before you, but not to the point that any of them are rendered trivial. Even the common mook enemies can land a tricky hit on you every now and then, and the damage you take there can mean the difference between life and death when you later fall into some spikes. Along the way, you'll find ways to add to Shovel Knight's skills, and this is where your survival chances go up considerably. In treasure chests or at shops, for example, you can pick up relics that give you access to new limited use items to help even out the odds. These skills can take the form of short range teleportation, a helpful projectile attack, or a means of levitating briefly. Each relic has very clear use cases to help you get out of a bind. Additionally, you can find upgrades in shops that give you either flat bumps to your health or magic, or helpful passive abilities like a gem magnet or a wider range to your shovel swing. If you're diligent about collecting gems along the way, you can usually afford to buy one or two things in each shop, but you you never have enough to get everything you want. Additionally, you can find three golden gears in every level, placed in obvious but slightly difficult to reach areas. They usually require putting yourself in more danger to pick them up, but if you collect them, you'll be given a choice at the end of a stage between a full health restore or a random new passive upgrade. These golden gears can make a huge difference in your runs. The benefit of that full health restore can't be overstated but they introduce another variable to consider when you're weighing your options in the thick of things. These gears challenge you to step outside your comfort zone and push yourself, but the cost of doing so can be high. Those of you who enjoy some meta progression in a roguelite will be pleased to note that there are some permanent upgrades that stick with you between runs. Leftover gems from a run will be tossed into your bank, and this can be spent on things like different armor sets to tweak your playstyle, or new kinds of relics that can appear in subsequent attempts. These upgrades, though, aren't the kind that will guarantee you succeed if you simply stay on the grind long enough, but they do offer up helpful tools and buffs that enhance your chance of success beyond the base kit. Perhaps most importantly, it feels like the economy here is well handled. You can't just buy out everything in a few runs like you could in Pocket Dungeon. In terms of presentation, Shovel Knight Dig takes the franchise from 8-bit to 16-bit and brings with it all the new fidelity you would expect. The art style feels like the natural progression of what came before, and seeing beloved characters and enemies rendered in a much more expressive and detailed style is exciting for Shovel Knight veterans. Environments are each given their own distinctive color palettes and have a lot of fun details going on in their backgrounds. Meanwhile, the soundtrack blends together remixes of classic tunes and all new music to make for a catchy backdrop to all the slashing and dashing. Hearing more complicated and layered music compared to the 8-bit chiptunes of the original game is interesting, but none of it feels out of place or out of step with what's come before. It does feel like the soundtrack is generally a little less memorable this time around, though this admittedly could just be a side effect of the much more intense pace of the gameplay. You don't have as much time to focus on the music when you're fighting for your life. Now, if there's one complaint that we have about Shovel Knight Dig, it's that it can feel like it's a little bit too short, even by roguelite standards. Our first full trip all the way down to the bottom came a little less than three hours into our overall playthrough. And though there are more things to unlock and try for in subsequent runs, we were still at over 50% completion for our file at this point. The content that's here is certainly high quality and well worth your time, but it feels in many ways like this is more of a side dish than a main entree. Those of you looking for a Dead Cells or Enter the Gungeon style experience that could take dozens of hours to fully conquer may feel a little disappointed. That said, there's also quite a bit of replayability here beyond raw unlocks for those of you who are more competitive. Though there isn't any multiplayer, you can post scores from your runs to the global leaderboard to see how you stack up. And there's also daily and weekly runs offered to keep you coming back. You can sort these leaderboards just to 
show people on your friends list too, allowing you to focus on keeping your competition more local if you prefer. This leaderboard integration helps to keep subsequent runs from feeling too grindy by providing a secondary incentive, as there's always someone out there a little better than you who you can work to overthrow. Shovel Knight Dig is another triumphant and enjoyable entry in the popular Indie Knight's growing legacy, offering up thrilling, challenging gameplay that will appeal to both fans old and new. Though it may be a little on the short side, every minute of Shovel Knight Dig positively oozes quality. Whether that be the snappy action platforming or the fresh 16-bit art style and animation, we'd give this one a high recommendation to anyone who enjoyed the original platformers or to anyone looking for a challenging new roguelite. We here at Nintendo Life give Shovel Knight Dig on the Nintendo Switch a 9 out of 10. Now, if you'd like to check out our full written review, you can find that along with more news and information about Shovel Knight Dig, including the official timeline of all of the games in the series over at nintendolife.com. And we'll even leave a handy link for that in the description down below. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below if you're a big Shovel Knight fan, if you've been waiting for this game for years, and if you're planning on picking it up. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, then why don't you dig your way over to that subscribe button and just give it a very nice nice, nice little tap with the shovel. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you to Mitch for spending time with Shovel Knight Dig. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you all next time. Oh, wow.